You can't stop the waves, but you can learn to surf. Namaste friends, I am Ritesh and let us start with the yoga sequence on how to correct or fix anterior pelvic tilt. Just five asanas to correct your anterior pelvic tilt. But don't forget, do it with love and a gentle smile. As I have told you earlier friends, it's important to note that a slight anterior pelvic tilt is perfectly normal. Research shows that about 85% of healthy males and 75% of healthy females exhibit a slight anterior pelvic tilt. So before we jump on the yoga sequence to correct your anterior pelvic tilt, it's important to understand about which muscles you are working on, that is stretching and strengthening. Let's talk about the anatomy of anterior pelvic tilt. Research indicates that over time certain muscles become overactive that is tight and other become underactive that is weak. The imbalance which results lead to anterior pelvic tilt. In a typical scenario these muscles are weakened. The abs that is your rectus abdominis, your transverse abdominis, internal and external obliques as well as the glutes that is the maximus, the medius and the minimus. These muscles become overactive or tight. The hip flexor muscles that is your iliac and psoas and the rectus femoris and the erector spinae muscle group. In today's yoga sequence we focus on hip flexors. Tightness in the erector spinae is an effect rather than cause for a forward tilted pelvis. Therefore, working on the iliac psoas muscles which bring about hip flexion is the key. Your hamstrings may also feel tight if you suffer from anterior pelvic tilt. Tightness in this muscle group is also an effect of rather than a cause for the abnormal tilt in the pelvic girdle. Stretching the hamstrings is good but this will not alleviate the problem. Why? Because the position of your pelvis when in anterior pelvic tilt pre-stretches the hamstring which gives you the false impression that they are tight. Oftentimes stretching them will do more harm than good. Focus on strengthening the gluteus and the abdominal muscles to reduce anterior pelvic tilt. Without further ado, let's get started. Lie down on your back, that is supine position. Relax in Shavasana, also known as corpse pose. Focus on your breathing, being still and receptive. It will also relax hip flexors and other muscles of the body. So they do not resist while you are practicing the asanas. Inhale deep and exhale deep. Let the breathing be relaxed and comfortable. Sthiram Sukham Asanam Supta Ardha Pavan Muktasana also known as Apanasana or supine knee to the chest pose. You can use a yoga block, a bolster or a foam roller and put it behind the sacrum for better stretch to the hip flexors. It's a passive stretch to hip flexors and also great for the digestive system. Be in the base position that is Shavasana. Let's focus on the right side first as it presses the ascending colon. Follow with the left leg which presses the descending colon directly. Inhale, bend the right knee and exhale, bring the thigh to the chest. Relax your neck and shoulders, chin tuck and smile. Inhale, interlock the fingers just below the right knee. Keep the left leg straight and on the ground. Exhale, gently press the knee to the chest. Inhale. 
relax. Exhale, gently press. Inhale, relax. Exhale, gently press. If you are comfortable, you can gently lift the head up for a few seconds. It will help you to strengthen the neck as well as the core muscles. That is your abdomen. People with high blood pressure should avoid lifting the head up. So inhale, chin tuck. Lift the head up. Continue breathing for a few seconds more. And then exhale. Take it down slowly and relax in Shavasana. Now let's focus on the left hand side. Inhale, bend the left knee and exhale, bring the thigh to the chest. <coughs> Check your neck and shoulders, they are relaxed. Chin tuck. Inhale, interlock the fingers just below the left knee. Keep the right leg straight and on the ground. Exhale, gently press the knee to the chest. Relax your neck and shoulders. Chin tuck and smile. Inhale, relax. Exhale, gently press. Inhale, relax. Exhale, gently press. If you are comfortable, you can gently lift the head up for a few seconds. So inhale, chin tuck, lift the head up. Continue breathing for a few seconds more and then exhale. Take it down slowly and relax in Shavasana. This posture will strengthen the spine and muscles of the back and hips while stretching the abdomen, hip flexors and chest. And now let us focus on Setu Bandhasana that is a bridge pose. This asana will strengthen your hamstrings and your gluteus muscle. Make sure you tighten your glutes and abdominal muscles while in this position to maintain a correct bridge pose alignment. Inhale, bend your knees and place your feet parallel to each other and hip width apart. Exhale, relax. Inhale, lift the hip up gently by pressing your heel down. Keep your pelvic neutral or posteriorly tilted if you have a back issue. And pull back with your feet towards your shoulders to engage the hamstrings. Keep the sides of your body lengthened. Roll both shoulder blades more deeply onto your back. Press your hands and arms down to create lift in the hips. Relax your neck and shoulders chin tuck and a gentle smile. Hold the asana with few breaths. As you are holding, be aware that the body weight is not coming on your neck or too much on your shoulders. Keep your core and glutes engaged. Distribute it equally on feet and shoulders also. Exhale, gently take the hips down. The third one is Anjaneyasana, also known as a low lunge or the runner's lunge. It strengthens the quadriceps and the gluteus muscle, stretches the psoas and hips, expands your chest, lungs and shoulders. Notice, please keep a cushion below the knee. Start in a downward facing dog or an exhale, step your right foot forward near your right thumb. Stack your right knee over the right ankle. Lower your left knee to the floor. Inhale to reach your arms overhead, chest and head reaching upwards. Face your palms towards one another and soften your shoulder down. Draw your tailbone down towards the earth lengthening your lower back and engaging your core muscles. Stay here or lift your chest and gaze. To release, place your hands down on the mat and step back to a down dog. 
repeat on the other side. Shalabhasan, also known as a locust or a grasshopper pose. Lie down on your stomach. Place both hands underneath the thighs and chin rests on the ground. Inhale, extend both and lift your right leg up. Glutes, core active and keep lengthening the legs. Knee should not bend. Continue with your breathing and hold this position. Relax your neck and shoulders and smile. Exhale, gently place your right leg down and relax. Similarly, do it with your left leg. Inhale, extend and lift your left leg up. Glutes, core active and keep lengthening the legs, knee should not bend. Continue with your breathing and hold this position. Relax your neck and shoulders and smile. Exhale, take down your leg and relax. Repeat this for five to seven times. After doing it with the left leg, inhale and lift your both legs up. Your leg should not bend at the knees. Lift your leg as much as you can. So let's do it. Inhale, extend and lift both legs together. Glutes, core active. And keep lengthening the legs. Knee should not bend. Continue with your breathing and hold this position. Exhale, take it down slowly and relax. With both legs, repeat the process for two to four times. And the fifth and the last one is Ardha Kapotasan, that is a half pigeon pose. So Kapotasan prepares the body for back bends and increases the external range of motion of the femur in the hip socket. This pose lengthens the hip flexors and if practiced consistently you will notice more ease in your lower half as you sit, walk and stand. Let us see how to do Ardha Kapotasana. Sit in Vajrasana or Adho Mukhaswanasana or Marijarasana. Tabletop position that is on all fours. Inhale Bend your left knee and place it in between the palms while your left foot near your right groin with your toes pointed. Exhale, extend your right leg straight back with the front of the thigh, the shin and the top of the foot resting on the floor. Square your hips to the front. Straighten the knee. Fix your gaze forward. Breathe slowly and deeply and stay in the pose for 30 to 60 seconds. Always check that your neck and shoulders are relaxed. Keep pressing the palms. Keep the abdomen gently engaged. Lengthen from the crown of your head. Chin tuck. Keep extending the right leg as back as possible. Feel the stretch on your right hip flexor. Release the pose and repeat the same step on the other side. Let's do it on the left hand side. Tabletop position that is on all fours. Inhale, bend your right knee and place it in between the palms. While your right foot is near to your right groin with the toes pointed. Exhale, extend your left leg straight back with the front of the thigh, the shin and the top of the foot resting on the floor. Square your hips to the front. Straighten the knee. Fix your gaze forward. Breathe slowly and deeply. 
and stay in the pose for 30 to 60 seconds. Always check that your neck and shoulders are relaxed. Keep pressing the palms. Keep your abdomen gently engaged. Lengthen from the crown of your head. Chin tuck. Keep extending the right leg as back as possible. Feel the stretch on your right hip flexors. Friends, all these asanas shown should be done in a very relaxed manner. In fact, it is passive and not an active stretch. Hope you enjoyed the yoga sequence for anterior pelvic tilt. Now, my next video will focus on when to use an anterior tilt in asan practice. Meanwhile, thank you for watching my video. Your comments educates me. So don't forget to comment. Take care. Keep smiling. Namaste.